Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. A welcome respite from day duties. But our Miss Brooks, Madison High's English teacher, didn't take any vacation. Week working at our local board of education office. They had asked for volunteer assistance during the holidays to make vacations possible for their already overburdened staff. The reason I worked was a dress. The most beautiful Easter Sunday dress of all time. And the reason for the dress? Mr. Philip Boynton, the most beautiful biology teacher of all time. <laughs> The price was right, too. Only $49.50 for the dress, not Mr. Boynton. <laughs> That's why I asked Mrs. Davis, my landlady, to wake me at the usual 7.30 a.m. last Monday morning. Oh, Connie, it's time to get up, Connie. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Davis. I want to get down to the board office early. Are you sure you ought to work during your holiday, Connie? After all, you do need a vacation pretty badly. Not as badly as I need a new dress for Easter. You know, I'm expecting Mr. Boynton to ask me out walking in the Easter parade on Sunday. Oh, I'm sure he will, Connie. But clothes are so expensive nowadays. Isn't there something you could do to the black-tailored suit of yours with the green braid trim? Well, I could burn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait till you see the one I've got my eye on. I saw it in Cherry's window last week. It's a powder blue crepe. I think I've seen it, Connie. Is that the dress with the snugly fitted bodice, V-neckline, and a flared full skirt with enchanting accordion pleated inset in front? Don't wrap it up. I'll eat it here. <laughs> <laughs> but, Connie, that looks like it costs a lot of money. Just $49.50, Mrs. Davis. And the job I'm taking this week pays $50. With the little I've put by, I figure I can get the dress and still have enough to live on through Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but what about next Monday? If Easter Sunday turns out the way I'm hoping it does, I won't have to live next Monday. <laughs> As the personnel manager of the board, I'd like to extend a cordial invitation, Miss Brooks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gleason. I've been looking forward to working here. Should be a complete change for me. All new faces. We're very grateful for the fact that you offered your services during this holiday week. In fact... What we at the board feel is hard to put into words. Well, then why not put it into an envelope? <laughs> I mean, there is a salary attached to this position. Of course, Miss Brooks. The job pays $50. Is that all right? Oh, that's more than all right, Mr. Gleason. Well, if that's the case, we could... Uh... It's just 50 cents more than's all right. <laughs> now, if you'd give me some idea of my duties, oh, I'd Oh, like... I'm not in charge of your department, Miss Brooks, but I'd like to caution you about the boss you will have. He's rather an exacting type of person. Now, I'll call our office boy, and he'll show you where to find your new boss. Boy? Oh, uh, boy. Here I am, Mr. Gleason. Right on the job and raring to go. Why, it's Walter Denton. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. What are you doing here? I might ask you the same question, Walter. How come you're not on vacation? Well, it's this way, Miss Brooks. You I see... like to see a nice relationship between teacher and pupil, but we are all here for one reason, remember? To catch up on some work. Agreed? Oh, sorry, Mr. Gleason. What do you want me to do? I want you to take Miss Brooks over to the acting head of the filing department. His office is right down this hall. Fourth door on your left. Yes, sir. Come along, Miss Brooks. All right, Walter. Thanks again, Mr. Gleason. Thank you, Miss Brooks. Well, so far it's a tie. One new face and one old face. But it seems like a pleasant enough place in which to work. Work? You mean you're here to work during Easter vacation? But why? I asked you first. Why are you working? Well, that's simple. I'm working to get some new clothes. After all, I can't drape my clever carcass in the sharp set of threads without I nail some extra veil. <laughs> now, why are you here? Same reason. <laughs> I can't hang any snazzy rags on my chic shape without I bag some extra swag, too. <laughs> oh, I'm really on a vacation. <laughs> Say, who is this new boss I'm working for, Walter? Well, I don't know, Miss Brooks. He's one of us extra helpers, but he didn't get down yet this morning. Here's his office. Let's go in. Hmm. It's a pretty nice office. Could use a little air, though. I think I'll open the window for my new boss. Nice view, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Say, that's very interesting. I've never had such a close look at the ventilator in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> 
I sure hope your boss here is easier on you than old Napoleon is. Napoleon? Yeah, that's what we call our beloved principal sometimes. That is when Harriet Conklin isn't around. She doesn't like us to call her father Napoleon. She says that beneath his gruff exterior, Mr. Conklin isn't tough at all. Believe me, Walter, beneath his gruff exterior, Mr. Conklin makes Napoleon look like Anita Louise. <laughs> oh, but I'm not going to worry about him. Every Napoleon has his Waterloo. And I sometimes think you're mine, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin? Oh, I didn't hear you come in. That is, what makes you say a thing like that? I eavesdropped. Very unreasonable of me, isn't it? I hope I haven't wounded you, Miss Brooks. Not wounded, sire. And smiling, the boy fell dead. <laughs> we were just chatting about French history, Mr. Conklin. Why? And... Yes, sire. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, my reward for working during the holidays is to be a staff composed of one of my most difficult year-round problem teachers and... and this... <laughs> run along now, this. I mean, Walter. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay, Miss Brooks. And I wish you wouldn't be too strict with her, Mr. Conklin. After all, this is vacation Get time. Get out. Yes, sir. Now then, Miss Brooks, I'll be brief. This is a holiday, and we are volunteering our services. However, there is financial compensation. Even I will receive some payment for the work I do this week. And where there is payment, Miss Brooks, there must be value received. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Conklin. I know you'll do a grand job. <laughs> I'm not worried about my doing a job, Miss Brooks. It's you. I expect you to conduct yourself here with the same enterprise, concentration, and serious-minded effort that you put into your... No, no. <laughs> it had better be more than that. Now, if you'll just step down the hall, my secretary will show you the filing room. Yes, sir. Oh, before I go, Mr. Conklin, would you mind telling me why you're working this week? Not at all, Miss Brooks. I'm working to acquire a new Easter outfit for myself. My wife, in her customarily ingenious manner, has already provided herself with a new hat and dress. How did she do that, Mr. Conklin? By spending the bulk of our life saving. <laughs> Now, I've got to get some new clothes or look like a rag picker by comparison. Well, that's a very human reaction, Mr. Conklin. Not a bit Napoleonic. Well, I must say you're an observant person, Miss Brooks. I've always tried to be just a plain, straightforward human being. As a matter of fact, my favorite slogan is the good old American saying that goes, Liberté, Equalité, Fraternité. Bonjour, mademoiselle. See you at Elba, monsieur. <laughs> See, now, where's that secretary who was Hello, talking? Miss Brooks, can I help you? Harriet Conklin. Well, this is a real Madison reunion, isn't it? I'm just acting as Daddy's secretary during the holiday so I can latch onto some lettuce to bribe the Easter Bunny. Clothes? Check. Now, if you'll follow me, Miss Brooks, I'll show you to the file room. It's just a few doors down. And there's another auxiliary worker in there already whom I know you'll just adore, Miss Brooks. Who's that, Harriet? You'll see. Here we are. I'll open the door for you, but you're going in alone. Oh, but Harriet, I don't... In you go. Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, hello, Miss Brooks. At last, a new face. <laughs> it's me, Mr. Boynton. Well, so it is. I didn't recognize you without the white mice in your hair. <laughs> that is, the surroundings here are so different from school. It does seem strange to see you outside of a biology laboratory. Thanks. Somebody left the lid loose, and I escaped from my job. I didn't mean it that way, Miss Brooks. I, I'm certainly happy to see you down here, but why are you... Why are you? To get myself some... Me too. <laughs> well, I made up my mind to get a new suit after last year's Easter parade. I, I was certainly embarrassed in that brown herringbone, remember? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Boynton, I was so embarrassed myself, I didn't notice your embarrassment. When I think of what I wore last season, I just have to laugh. <laughs> oh, what an old rag. A black tailored suit with green braid trim. <laughs> well, if we're to get new outfits, we'd better put in a good week's work starting right now. Of course, this uh, filing room's pretty small for two people to work in, isn't it? Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'll just go over here Oops, to the... Oh, <laughs> excuse me. 
Gosh, every time we turn around, we're going to bump into each other. Mr. Boynton? Yes, Miss Brooks? First one who stops turning is a sissy. <laughs> We started work on Monday And here it is Friday already The time sure went fast It seems as if I only worked an hour You worked less than an hour <laughs> Here's the pay window, Miss Brooks You can get in line right behind Walter and me Thanks, Harriet Keep the line moving, please Next Oh, that's me, Mr. Gleason Denton Walter Here's your check, Denton Walter Happy Easter Thank you, sir I'm next Brooks Constance Brooks Constance Here you are, Brooks Constance Happy Easter Thank you. Easter happy to you, Gleason mister. <laughs> now, let's see now. With this $50, I can... Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me, Mr. Gleason. Was something wrong, Miss Brooks? Why, yes. This check is for $37.50. I thought I was to receive $50. Deductions, Miss Brooks. Withholding tax, Social Security, unemployment. Then, of course, there's the $5 contribution, which all volunteer workers at the Board of Education must make to the pension fund for old teachers. Pension fund for... Mr. Gleason. Yes, Miss Brooks? Give me mine now. I just aged 30 years. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palmolive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palmolive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure, new charm. So ladies, forget all other beauty care and use Palmolive Soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try palm olive's beauty lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big bath size palm olive in tub or shower. Well, Saturday morning finally rolled around, but the twelve and a half dollars between me and my blue crepe Easter dress didn't roll around with it. Right after breakfast, Mrs. Davis and I sat down in the living room and tried to figure a way out. I know what, Connie. Maybe Sherry's department store will let you owe them the twelve fifty. You know, pay it off on time. I'd rather not ask them, Mrs. Davis. But why not? They might bring up the $14 I owe them for my black suit. <laughs> I'd be happy to loan you the money myself, Connie, but honestly, I haven't got it. Oh, I wouldn't think of accepting a loan from you, Mrs. Davis, in as much as you haven't got it. <laughs> I've got just enough petty cash left to buy the things we'll need for tomorrow's Easter party. Party? Yes, didn't I tell you? I've asked some of our friends in for a little egg hunt and Easter luncheon. I'm going out to get the eggs and coloring in a few minutes. Sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm going to write the names of all my favorite people on the eggs and hide them individually. But there are two names which I'm going to hide right next to each other. Guess which ones, Connie? Mr. Boynton and myself? No. Lum and Abner. <laughs> oh, I just know your spirits will perk up when the party starts. I've asked several of our mutual friends, the Conklins, Walter Denton, your fellow English teacher, Miss Enright, Mr. Boynton... Please, Mrs. And... Davis, even in conversation, you shouldn't put Miss Enright so close to Mr. Boynton. <laughs> you don't have to worry about Miss Enright Boynton at all. To do is convince Mr. Boynton. Now, Miss Enright has a lot of nice qualities. Well, I'd like to find them, but that far down... I... <laughs> you know, the worst of it is, she'll probably be while I sit around in that black sack of mine. Even Mr. Boynton's getting a new suit to replace his brown herringbone. You mustn't give up hope, honey. 
We'll think of some way to get you that new dress. Who knows? The Easter Bunny may stop by and drop it right into your lap. Well, I'm going to the market now, dear. All right, Mrs. Davis. What are you going to do? What can I do? I'll just sit here and make a lap. <laughs> Well, all right then. I promise not to tell where I got the money. I love you to let Miss Brooks have it, especially since it means giving up your own Easter outfit. Oh, rocking chairs got me, <laughs> came by my side. Fetch me twelve fifty, <laughs> or tomorrow I will hide. <laughs> Unless that's the Easter bun, not interested. <laughs> oh, coming. Well, if it isn't Miss Enright. Good morning, Miss Brooks. I hope I didn't waken you. Awaken me? Aren't, aren't you going to ask me in, Miss Brooks? Let's go into the living room. I would... Let's sit down, Miss Enright. Thank you. Rickety old thing, isn't it? <laughs> now, look here, Miss Enright. I just came by to lend a hand with the arrangements for tomorrow's Easter party. Who? But Mrs. Davis will be. Oh, well, I assume you've got your Easter outfit all set. Oh, yes, except for a few odds and ends I pick up this afternoon. Ensemble. My dress alone cost over $100. Money. Oh, I didn't buy it out of my salary. Papa, Bill. <laughs> Can your papa help you out with your... <laughs> but you'll love ash drape over the hips. A bustle on you? <laughs> yes. What's wrong with my wearing a bustle? Nothing, darling, but isn't that like carrying coals to Newcastle? <laughs> well, if that's how my friendly overtures are received, I'll just be running along. See you to the door, Miss Enright? No, thanks, Miss Brooks. You'd better stay in your rocker and exercise your wits. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> I don't care what she wears. If I were Mr. Boynton, I'd ask me out instead of her any day. <laughs> It was certainly nice of you to take me shopping, Walter. Now I've got everything I need for Easter Sunday. But I thought you didn't have enough loot, Miss Brooks. How could you buy all this stuff if you had the shorts? The shorts? <laughs> oh, not enough money. <laughs> well, Mrs. Davis came home a few hours ago and handed me an envelope with $25 in it. Twelve fifty more than I needed. $25? Where'd she get it? She wouldn't tell me. She said she was sworn to secrecy. Well, you know what I always say? Never look a gift bunny in the mouth. What did you buy with a dough? Just a hat and dress. What kind? Well, it's a powder blue sheer crepe with a snugly fitted bodice, V-shaped neckline, cut rather low, with an accordion pleated inset in the front. And what kind of a dress did you get? <laughs> An off-the-face straw with a belt in the back. And to the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade. And now, folks, before we have lunch, let's all join in the grand egg hunt. Will you explain the rules, Connie? I'll be glad to, Mrs. Davis. What are they? <laughs> I think I know, Miss Brooks. We all hunt through the house for the eggs, and as we find them, we bring them to Mrs. Davis, who marks our names down on a piece of paper. That's right, Walter. Then the one who finds the most eggs gets the prize. Isn't that correct, Daddy? If I find any eggs, I'm going to eat them. I'm starved. <laughs> Now then, get ready, everyone. When I say three, the hunt is on. And remember, I'll be sitting at the kitchen table with a pencil and paper. Ready? One, two, three! Miss <laughs> Brooks. Yes, Walter? Could you give me a hint where some of the eggs might be hidden? Have you tried looking in Miss Enright's bustle? <laughs> She's got enough room back there to hide the hens that laid them. That bustle certainly is a scream. <laughs> Confidentially, Miss Brooks, 
Your new Easter gown is much prettier than Miss Enright's. Well, thank you, Walter. It's such a beautiful shade of blue. And those pleats are really a smash. And I'm not just talking this way because you're an English teacher and that's a subject which I'm not completely at home in always and I'm afraid maybe I'll flunk in. <laughs> Without any such access to grind, Miss Brooks, you're gorgeous. Keep talking that way, Walter, and you ain't never gonna flunk. <laughs> I mean it, Miss Brooks. When Mr. Boynton gets here and sees you in that outfit, I'll bet he jumps right out of his skin. He better not. Miss Enright will jump right into it. <laughs> I wonder what's keeping Mr. Boynton. He should have been here by now. I gathered that from Miss Enright's attitude. Half of the morning, she's been facing the door in a running position. <laughs> well, I'd better join the happy egg hunters. Uh, would you excuse me, Miss Brooks? Certainly, Walter. Good luck. Well, hello, Miss Brooks. I see the egg you're hunting for hasn't rolled in yet. <laughs> if you're referring to Mr. Boynton, Miss Enright, I'm not a bit worried about missing him. The minute your quarry makes an appearance, I'm sure your bustle will come to a point. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, let's let bygones be bygones, at least for a little while. May I compliment you on your gown? Oh, please do. It's lovely. Well... Well, don't puff up like a powder pigeon. I merely said the gown was lovely. Oh. The regrettable fact remains that no matter how lovely the gown we wear, some of us still manage to make it look like the bag it came in. <laughs> that does it. You have just bygone your last bygone. <laughs> You're just full of bon mots, aren't you? <laughs> oh, that last gem just killed me. Well, you've still got eight lives to go. Now <laughs> then, try looking in the back of the house, folks. They must be someplace. What's the trouble, Mrs. Davis? Oh, they've only found half of the dozen eggs I hid, Connie. They can't seem to find any of the others. Not even Lum and Abner, the two I hid together. Oh, well, why don't you give them some hints, Mrs. Davis? I can't. I forget where I hid them. <laughs> They'll just have to go on hunting. I, for one, shall hunt no more. Where's my lunch, Margaret? <laughs> it's uh, buffet style today, Osgood. Why don't you and the children just go right ahead and get started? Splendid. Harriet, Walter, let's tie on the feed bag. Miss Brooks? Mm, no, thanks. <laughs> Miss Enright, why don't you join Mr. Conklin and the kids? I'm sure they'll miss you more than I would. <laughs> no, thanks, dear. I'll just stay right here. I wish Mr. Boynton would show up. I'm getting a little tired of peering out the window. I think I'll just sit down here facing the door. Ah! What's the matter, Connie? I just found Lum and Abner. <laughs> oh, what a shame, darling. The egg splattered all over your blue dress. Oh, this is awful. These eggs weren't even boiled, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> I'm sorry, Connie. I must have forgotten. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. There was something else I forgot to tell you. What? Mr. Boynton called while you were in the shower and said he wasn't coming over. But would you meet him in the park near the zoo right away? Meet him in the park? But my dress is ruined. What'll I wear? Does it matter really, darling? Remember, there's another Easter parade next year. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Boynton, but Mrs. Davis didn't give me her message until a few minutes ago. Well, that's all right, Miss Brooks. We've got the whole day ahead of us. You see, the reason I didn't come to the house was... Well, I knew everyone would be all dressed up, and frankly, I was a little self-conscious about my appearance. Your appearance? You should have seen what happened to me. No, you shouldn't have. <laughs> well, well, here I am. And you look wonderful, Miss Brooks. I know you work most of the time, but like I told Mrs. Davis yesterday, that week away from school did you a lot of good. Mrs. Davis? You saw Mrs. Davis yesterday? Well, yes, she, she dropped by while she was shopping. Just a little social call, you understand. I understand a lot of things now, Mr. Boynton. I, I know I've been pretty reticent in the past, but today I want to tell you something that comes from the bottom of my heart. Yes, Mr. Boynton? To me, you're just the grandest lady in the Easter parade. That new black suit with the green trim is a knockout. A knockout? You know, I think you mean that. Mr. Boynton, may I tell you something? What's that, Miss Brooks? You're the grandest Easter bunny that ever wore a brown herringbone suit. <laughs> Eve 
Martin as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable, gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try luster cream shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, the Easter parade was a big success. And after staying out in the air all day, Mr. Boynton and I got pretty hungry. So as soon as we got home, we headed right for the kitchen. Oh, I don't want you to go to any trouble, Miss Brooks. Oh, no trouble at all, Mr. Boynton. There must be something left from the luncheon. Oh, can I do anything to help? No, thanks. You just sit down, and I'll tell you all about the egg hunt. Okay, I'll sit right here. What's that? <laughs> Mr. Boynton. Yes? How do you want your pants, fried or scrambled? <laughs> Next week, tune into another Hour Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Mary Jane Croft, and Ed Begley. <laughs> Here's good shaving news. Three men out of every four can get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves with Palmolive Brushless Shaving Cream. This is not just a claim. Here's the proof. 1,297 men tried the Palmolive Brushless way to shave, described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three men out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palmolive Brushless yourself. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the proved palm olive brushless way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Now stay tuned for Welcome Back Baseball, which follows over most of these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.